Okay, last we um, the last place we stopped was in looking at how we could use um, shifting um, within MIPS to extract information, um, knowing that a um, a 32-bit word is formatted um, one of several different ways. We learned that we could use MIPS. Um, through shifting to extract, you know, the several different fields that reside within there. So let's do another example. If I want to extract register information, um, I could do a couple of things. One way of getting um, some information out of these registers is to shift left and shift right. So for example, if you have these 32 bits, this one instruction, um, you could, number one, do a shift right by 26. So that way, um, when you do that shift right, those 26 bytes to the right would all go off, and what you'd be left with is just the six bits that would tell you what that instruction is. Um, so we learned previously that the load word um, is associated with um, a 6-bit value for the instruction. I think we found that to be a hex 23. Right, so when we shifted that right there, right 26 bits, we discovered that sitting within T1 is um, a 23 or a 35. So we know that for a load word it is it has an opcode of 23 or decimal 35. Now what happens if we take our load word and we shift it, we know that it's an I type um, from the green card. Um, so if you recall from the MIPS green sheet or green card, um, all of your instructions are going to follow a format that's either an R or an I, and then there are a few that are J or jump type instructions. Um, and each one of those instructions then is going to fit in one of these boxes where it's either an R, I, or J type of box. So what type of instruction or what format that instruction is is going to be determined by the opcode. So the opcode um, is that value over here off to the right. So your opcode um, is going to be the very first um, value whenever you have an opcode function um, pairing. Um, not all um, not all instructions will have an opcode and a function. It all certainly depends on which instruction you're looking at. Um, if you see two different values, then that indicates that the first one's going to be the opcode and the second one is going to be a function. And if you only see one value, then that indicates that it's just an opcode. So if you look at this, um, the instructions that have an opcode and um, a function code typically will be R-type instructions that have both. And notice that for all of the R-type instructions, you see a zero for the opcode. All these other ones, the I format and the J format instructions, simply have an opcode. So since 
for the R type instructions. They all have a zero for the opcode. We know if we see a zero, we can um, expect that to be uh, uh, an R type instruction. And to figure out which instruction it is, we're going to have to look at the function code. So if we scroll down here a bit and look at the function formats, um, notice that the only instruction that shows um, an opcode in the function then would just simply be the R type. Um, so you'll need both to figure out which particular instruction you're looking at. Whenever you get a zero for the opcode, you're going to need both the opcode and a function to decode it. Otherwise, we just take the opcode and we can go to our green sheet or um, look this up in a table. So let's go back to our presentation. So if I want to get some information out of this instruction, certainly shifting it left um, will um, allow me to drop off the opcode. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if I have one, two, three, four, five, um, that six would be the opcode. The next five would be a particular register field. And I would end up with um, another register field, which would be another five bits. But 6 and 5 is 11, so that means that there are 21 bits to the right um, of this line here, and 11 bits to the left. The 11 bits being both the opcode and the first register um, indicated by RS, the RS field. So what happens if I do what we see here? Um, in line 6, we will shift this value um, to the left by 6 bits. And by doing that, we drop off those first um, 6 bits. And so we're just left with 5 bits over here and everything else to the right. And then now if I take this, where I have my 5 bits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and everything else to the right, um, those 5 bits and those 27 bits that are left, in order for me to get to those 5 bits, I can shift right. And what I'm left with then is just simply the 5 bits that would indicate which register we have. So there's um, a bit of code here that we can look at that will show you how that's done. So I'm going to, ex I'll take this from paste bin and see if I can put this into code blocks if I have it already set up and I do. So there's code blocks. So I'll drop the code in. Let's run it. And compile it and run it. Let's see what we get out. It says, shows me two things. It first shows me what happens after shifting left, six bits, and then what's left after shifting right. So I'm left with the hex value of eight. So that eight um, should be one of the registers. It should be the RS register. Um, and to verify that, if you look at the green card, um, the green card confirms that register 8 right here, register 8 corresponds to T0. So register 8 corresponds to T0, register 9, T1, register 10, T2, all the way up to register 15, which is T7. So register 8 is T0. Um, and in the original instruction, um, we were indeed using T0. Um, and in this case, um, T1 
T0 is that particular register there.